Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Myself Prag Zambulkar. In this video, we will see union type in programming languages. So here we will see what do we mean by union. Then what is the difference between normal records and unions. Then we will see what do we mean by discriminated union. What do we mean by free union. What is the difference between discriminated union and free union. And we will see some examples from different programming languages. So how union is defined. So union is a type whose variables may store different type values at different times during program execution. So what do you mean by this? So see this is the example from C language. So this is how union is defined. Now see it has three fields. One is integer, another is float and third is character. Now at one time instance it will have only one value. So it may have integer or it can be float or it can be character. So at one time instance, it will have only one value. So this is called as a union. So better we'll start with the difference between record and union. So concept of union will be clear. Now see in C language, in C or C++ language, record is defined by using keyword struct and we call it structure. So this is a structure and how union is defined in C language, C or C++ language like this. For that we use this keyword union. Now see, while allocating memory, how it is allocated? So see, for this structure, so suppose an uh, integer requires 2 bytes, float requires 4 bytes, character requires 1 byte. Now see, 2 plus 4 plus 1, so 2 plus 4, 6 plus 1, 7. So total 7 bytes are allocated for the variable of this structure. Now for this union, see integer requires 2 bytes, float 4 bytes, character 1 byte. So float, who requires maximum bytes? So float, float requires 4 bytes. So for the variable of this union type, at max there will be 4 bytes, means only 4 bytes are allocated for this. So see in this example, same things I have put there, one integer float character and here also I have put same variables, same fields, one integer float character. In this case, in structure, there will be seven bytes, seven bytes will be allocated, while here only four bytes will be allocated. Why four? Because so out of these three fields, float require largest memory. So float require four bytes of memory. So that 4 bytes of memory will be allocated to the variable of this union and that 4 bytes will be shared by the integer, 4 bytes will be shared by float and that 4 bytes will be shared by character. While here everyone has is different memory. That memory is not shared in structure or record but that memory is shared in union. Now see as we have defined union, so how we have defined? Variables means fields may store different type values at different times. So what do you mean by this? So see at one time instance it will have integer value because see that some values will be saved in that union. So it will be saved as some bit value and when we are retrieving that so we may retrieve at a, as an integer from the same values same bits we may retrieve float value from the same bits, same values, we can retrieve character. So, uh, suppose for example, uh, we have some 97, suppose that value we have saved. So, if you retrieve the value, so it will be 97 as an integer, if you retrieve as an integer. If you retrieve as a float, so it will be 97.0. If you retrieve it as a character, so 97 will be considered as ASCII value. So, character will be A, small a. So, that will be retrieved like this. So same uh, memory is shared among all the fields. So at one time instance only one value will be there. And this is how we declare variable. So just like structure only. So here is union keyword sample is union type and this is a variable that we have defined. Now most important concept that uh, we normally use in PPL subject or programming languages that is a discriminated union and along with that uh, we use this word free union 
so what do you mean by discriminatory union and free union so keep in mind uh, unions that we use in c c++ language we call them free unions again i am repeating whatever the unions that we use in c c++ language we call them free unions so why we call them free unions because there is no restriction or there is no type checking on the unions of c c++ language now what do you mean by this so see uh, we will see example for that so this is a simple example so here one union type we are defining there are two fields one is integer a and another is float b here uh, of this union type we are defining one variable my union okay? this is of type this and along with this we are defining one float variable so this is different from this union now see to the variable of this okay to this union and this my union this a a is what a is an integer so to this integer we are allocating value 27 right to this integer value we are allocating 27 now to this x variable see this is x this is a different x variable it is of type float and to this x i am allocating value from the b value from the b so see while allocating value we have allocated to a but whenever i wanted to use value at the time i use value of b so here i use b while allocation we use value of a so we have allocated value to a but while using we have allocated we have used value of b so it is a 27 so 27.0 that value will be allocated to x so see in this case there is no type checking is done so we allocated integer but we use float so overall never we have checked any type so if there is no such kind of restriction if there is no type checking if there is no type checking of any value so such kind of unions are called as free unions so in c c++ language whatever the unions that we use are the free unions in c c++ language unions are the free union now what do you mean by discriminated union so see that i have told in free union there is no type checking but if we are doing type checking so it is called a like discriminated union now to check type we require something so what we require we require some indicator we require some type indicator and that is called as like a discriminator or tag so here we will see in discriminated union to check type we require something we require type indicator and that type indicator is called as like tag or it is called as like a discriminant and such kind of union is called as like a discriminated union so c c++ language they don't support discriminated union so which languages support discriminated union so see first language which was supporting discriminated union was alcohol 68 along with that ada ml haskell f sharp language they support discriminated union so we'll see example from the ada programming language so you will come to know how discriminated union look like and how they work so look at this this is an example from the ada programming language so in ada programming language to define union we use this keyword type now see so this is the union that we are defining and these are the different types uh, these are the different uh, type which is not a part of union here whatever the union that we are defining is this now see in this case so its syntax is like this is a record so basically we are defining a record but which is a union now see here in this case this is the discriminant this is the discriminant or tag now see so what are the values of this union figure so see so one is this field okay uh, this is a type and this is the variable so field is of type boolean then this is another variable color and what is the type of color is colors colors means this color this type we have taken 
a possible value will be a red green blue okay so it will have one variable second variable now tag is a third variable keep in mind tag is also a part of this union so form form is a variable and what is the type of form is shape shape means this uh, because this is a user defined type so shape is a user defined type and what is the possible value circle triangle rectangle these are the possible values of the shape shape is a type user defined type and its variable is form so this combinedly we call it tag or discriminant and this is also a part of this union so the see this is the first variable this is the second variable this is the third variable now see based on this value okay while defining this we will pass some value we will pass value of this form form is a variable so what values are possible it can be a uh, circle it can be triangle it can be rectangle so whatever the value that we pass based on that some action we are taking so what action we are taking just like we pass the values to the function in the same way we are passing some values to this union so see if this form is a circle so see here i have told this form can be circle this form can be rectangle this form can be triangle or rectangle so when this form is circle so what action we are taking we are adding this variable in this union so diameter that is of type float now see so if form is circle so we are adding this variable so see if form is circle so four variables will be there so in this union figure first variable is field second variable is color okay third variable that is the tag and fourth variable as form is a circle fourth variable will be diameter so four variables will be there if this form is a triangle okay if this form is triangle so what value uh, it is adding so left underscore uh, side right underscore side and angle okay these three uh, variables are three fields that we are adding in this union so see if form is equal to triangle then how many variables will be there in this union first variable second variable form that will be third variable then as form is a triangle then fourth variable fifth variable and sixth variable so total six variable will be there now see if form is rectangle then these two fields will be added so if form is rectangle so how many variables will be there again see. first variable second variable form that is the third variable and form is a rectangle so these two side underscore one and side underscore two these two variables will be added there so three was there and these two so three plus two five variables will be there now see here based on this discriminant this is a discriminant or tag based on this discriminant based on the possible values of this type we are taking some action so this is called as a discriminated union or uh, we can also call it tagged union or uh, mostly that we use discriminated union so this is a discriminant or this is a tag this is a, this type indicator which is called as a discriminant or tag and whenever we are using that it is called as a discriminant or discriminated union so this is how it is implemented in ADA programming language so see uh, this figure so here what are the union that we have defined so type uh, of this union is figure okay so this uh, union we have defined of type figure figure is a union type and from this uh, figure here we are defining two variables figure underscore one figure underscore two now see if we compare this two so here we are passing the value of form but here there is no value is passed so here in this case figure underscore one is called as unconstrained variant record why unconstrained because we are not passing any value there and uh, figure two it is called as constrained 
variant record. Why constraint? Constraint is a condition. Constraint means a condition. Some restrictions. So it is called the constraint variant record. Why it is constraint variant record? Because we are passing some value there. So see, uh, as we are not passing any value there, so then how the type checking is done? So type checking is done dynamically at at runtime. Runtime in the sense, whenever we are allocating values to variables of the figure underscore one, so at that time it will check what is the value of form. So if form is at the runtime when we are allocating the value, if form is circle, so it will check whether it has a diameter or not of type float. If form is a uh, triangle, then it will check uh, whether it has this value, left side, right side and angle of type integer, integer float. If it is a rectangle, then it will check whether it has a side underscore one of type integer, side underscore two of type integer. But that will be done dynamically that, that will be done at runtime. Runtime because see, uh, while defining this variable, we are not passing anything. So at runtime, dynamically, it will be decided, it will be checked, it will check the value of form and based on that value of the form, it will check the other variables, other fields. But in this case, now see, while defining the variable of this uh, figure, okay, this variable figure underscore 2, here we are defining, here we are setting the value of form, form is a triangle. So at compile time only, because at compile time, we are knowing. So form will be triangle only. So at compile time we are knowing form is a triangle. So at compile time only it will check. At compile time only it will check as form is a triangle. So it should have this field only. By mistake if you allocate this value so it will give error. Because see at compile time only compiler is knowing form is equal to triangle. So definitely it will have it should have these three values of this type. But by mistake, if you allocate this value, so it will at compile time only it will give errors that uh, wrongly you allocated the values. Or if you take uh, diameters, so again it will give the error. So as we are knowing, form is a triangle, so it must have these values of this type. So at compile time, statically we will check it. So here statically we will check it. So this kind of uh, record is called as a constraint variant record by constant because this constant we are passing there this is also the discriminated union because while defining we are using the discriminant but uh, it is an unconstrained variant record why unconstrained because we have not passed any value statically it will check the type at and here runtime when we allocate the values to these variables of this so runtime dynamically values are checked now see, uh, so F sharp language unions are defined uh, defined like this. So at that time we use this symbol. So type keyword is used and uh, this or symbol is used there. So there are two fields, this field or this field. So syntax in F sharp language is like this. Now see, we will see descriptor. So what do my descriptor? Descriptor is collection of all the attributes, collection of all the properties. So see for the discriminated union. What are the properties or what are the attributes are there? So again, we will take example of ADA programming language. So see, so here a type is a keyword to define union. So here this is a tag, this is a discriminant that we are using. So it is of type boolean. So what are the possible values? It can be true, it can be false. If it is true, so it will have one more field that is a count that will be of type integer. If tag, this is a false, so it will have this field, sum is equal to float, sum of type float. Now see, uh, this is a discriminant of this. So see, it has one variable tag of type boolean. Then offset means is the address, address of the record, record uh, address of this from the initial address, initial address of this record. So that is the offset. Now see uh, one more field. So here, this one field. This is a discriminant is already added here. So based on the discriminant values, we'll have the other field. So if the discriminant is true, so at that time, this will be the values there. So count of type integer. If 
tag is false then it will have this field sum of type float so this is how this uh, descriptor of the discriminated union looks like in ada programming language so i hope uh, you have understood what what is the meaning of discriminated union and free union keep in mind c c++ language uh, that union that we use it is a free union and in ada programming language we can use discriminated union for that we have to use such kind of discriminant so example already we have seen here so this is the discriminant or tag we use there so friends i hope you like this video if is yes, then click on like subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press bell icon so that you will get notification of my next video so stay connected thank you